Okay, in this video, we're going to discuss the programming and the diagnostics of the Chamberlain Liftmaster CB11, uh, or as you might see on the uh, on some of the control panels there, it has just the part number SWG0370. Um, this is for 230 volt swing gate openers. Um, and today we've got this set up with just one pair of photo cells, one motor. Uh, the photo cells we've got wired in are just the 771E uh, uh, fail-safe photo cells, which are a two-wire cell connection. Uh, but we'll go through the programming of the photo cells, programming of the limits, uh, what the trimmers are and what the dip switches are, etc. And also some of the diagnostics, what faults you might expect or could you possibly encounter on this panel and how to identify those faults if you've got one present. So we'll start with uh, some of the items on the board. So let's start with the LEDs we've got going on here. So you'll notice, you can just about see here, we've got a bottom row of LEDs. Uh, these are for your start command inputs and your uh, when we're going through a learn phase, uh, these LEDs will only come on during those periods. The middle row of LEDs are for some of your safety inputs. Uh, the flashing LEDs we have here are for the photocells and the uh, one on the furthest right here is for the safety edge input. You'll notice there's a little resistor that bridged across there, uh, which is monitoring an 8K 2 ohm uh, resistive input. The top row of LEDs, we have the green stop circuit, which is default. We've linked this out. This is this comes linked out <coughs> out of the box. And learn timer, which is basically only comes on flashing when uh, when the countdown uh, has commenced for when it, the auto close feature uh, is enabled. Um, the top row of trimmers we have here, you can see <clears throat> first one starting from the left, we've got the bipart delay. Um, now this will only be typically turned up if you've got two gates and you might want a uh, one leaf to start opening before the other. So in, in scenarios where you've got electric locks or if you've got a slam plate on one of the gates there and you need one gate to start moving or to start opening before the other one does and vice versa, they want one gate to start closing before the other. This is the trimmer that you need to do. This is kind of the, uh, what they call bipart delay, it could be called wing delay, leaf delay. Um, uh, it basically separates one leaf from operating before the other. As we've only got one motor connected here, uh, we've turned that all the way to the off position. So there'll be, if you had two leaves there and you turned it all the way in the off position, there'd be no delay at all between both leaves opening. Um, we've got the timer to close, which is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, it, it's the time that you'd set before the auto close feature kicks in. Um, typically turning up about a quarter there will give you about 20 to 30 seconds period before it auto closes. If you're to turn this trimmer all the way off, that sets it into a uh, semi-automatic mode. So to turn it all the way off, you turn it all the way anti-clockwise as far as it will go, and that will put it into what we call a semi-automatic mode. Um, semi-automatic basically means you'll have to prompt the gates to open with a remote control or one of the control inputs, but you'll also need to prompt the gates to close uh, once they've reached the open position. Uh, um, next on the list, we've got the Force 1 and Force 2, these, second, these final two trimmers here, uh, which is basically the, uh, the torque settings for the motors. So if you used to have a, I don't know, say a, a fully boarded gate, uh, fully cladded with, uh, with wooden infill, um, which can be susceptible uh, to, to windy conditions, you may want to turn those torque settings up a bit so that the motors can handle uh, the windy conditions a bit more because although they're 230 volt motors, um, it, when you have uh, wind or force uh, against the direction that they're moving in, if the force is all the way down to the bottom, uh, it can prevent them from closing. So turning the force settings up again, you might want to do this in uh, seasonal, uh, you know, into later into the into the winter months or autumn months, what have you, when you get wetter, wetter and windy conditions there. Um, the force settings may need to be inc increased to accommodate the, those kind of conditions. Right, next we've got the bank of dip switches on the right hand side. <clears throat> These are also default set out of the box uh, to standard settings, standard parameters. So um, dip switches one, two and three, that's for the type of behavior you'll have from your control inputs and whether it's going to auto close, etc. So by default, expect to see these with dip switches one and two on and three off. 
It's difficult to see on this video because they are tiny little switches, but dip switches one and two be switched to the left, uh, three is switched to the right. That puts into the standard programming mode, standard mode basically, what they call. Um, so when your trimmer is turned up slightly, the gates will auto close. Uh, dip switch five is for your photocells, for the type of photocells you've got connected in. Now, your kit, your gate automation kit should be supplied with a pair of fail-safe photocells. So in this case, we have the 771E photocells uh, on the top of this board. They're just there for uh, demonstration purposes. Uh, in most kits these days, you will be supplied with a pair of the 772E photocells. So don't be surprised if they look slightly different to these. Um, but they are two wire photocells. Uh, so you can either wire uh, two core connection from each photo cell back to the board or you can take it from cell to cell to the, back into the panel like I have here Okay, uh, it's important that dip switch 5 is on when you've got this type of cell connected if you used to have <coughs> Relay photo cells connected and wired into the same inputs that I have here on 22 and 24 from the normally closed and the common contacts of the cell Then you must turn dip switch 5 to the off position uh, that will then switch it to the mode to monitor normally closed contacts across these inputs. <clears throat> However, two things to bear in mind. If you do switch it to that mode, any contacts which are empty will need to be linked back to the common, which is terminal 24. Um, the other major thing you need to bear in mind if you have relay photo cells on this board is because the panel doesn't have a photo test function which basically checks that the relays fire open and closed before any any operation uh, the gates will not allow or the board will not allow the gates to auto close so you'll only be able to get semi-automatic operation with this panel if you are using relay photocells if you need to have the auto close function enabled then you must have the fail safe photocells connected <clears throat> Okay, so that is the trimmers, the dip switches. Uh, the other thing you must make sure that you've plugged in before you try and do any programming, especially of your remote controls, is the radio card, which will be supplied separately. And this just plugs onto the little four pin connectors, top and bottom, the male and female connections. Okay, so let's say we are fully ready to go. Um, we've got our motor connected up. We've got our photo cells connected, connected up. Hy hypothetically, let's say we've got our safety all connected in. <clears throat> and the next step we need to do is programming. Now, these photocells will not work by just wiring them straight in. You must program the panel to register the cells on the board beforehand. So to do this, you'll notice in the center of the board, there are a pair of pins. And next to that, there's labeled save failsafe photocells. So to program this panel, uh, what we must do is remove the jumper uh, from the one pin. Put it across both pins, power the board down, make sure all LEDs are going off. Um, before we remove this jumper, power the board back up. And what we're expecting to see is the center row of LEDs, uh, the connection that we've wired into with our photo cells there, that LED will, will remain on as will the edge LED. Um, but when we remove the jumper from this panel, I expect to see to hear a click on the board and for those LEDs to go off. Okay, so now we are just left with open and OPCL flashing, and that's because <clears throat> the circuit is good because there's nothing connected into these inputs there. What we don't ever want to see on this row of LEDs is a solid red LED. If you have a solid red LED on this row uh, of uh, LEDs here, that means there is a fault, uh, be it with the photo cells, be it with the uh, safety edge, <clears throat> one, all, all the above really. You need to make sure that the LEDs are either flashing to signify open circuit, or the, the LED is off to indicate it's got a safety device connected in and that the panel is happy. Uh, the LED will come on solid if you're Save the edge is triggered, <clears throat> or if there's something in the way of your photo cells. So if you ever have a solid red LED, more than likely, if it's a photo cell input that, is, uh, that the LED is on solid for, then there's something blocking the photo cells, or there is something, um, some muck on the lenses or something along those lines. <clears throat> the other LEDs you can check is on the actual cells themselves. 
So you've noticed on here, I've got a solid red LED. So it's the opposite diagnostics to what's on the panel. Trying to adjust that a little bit. And when I block the cell, the LED blinks. So if you've got a blinking LED on your 771E photocells or 772E photocells, the, it, the, this cell can't see the opposite or vice versa. Remove the obstacle, the LED will go back to being permanently lit. Okay, so now we have our safety devices, our photo photocells registered, our safety edges registered on the board. The next step we have to make is programming the limits. So there are two ways to program the limits with this control panel. Uh, you can either program it in a very basic mode where uh, the gate will operate at, at full speed <coughs> to the open position and full speed to the closed position, or you can program it with, with what they call in the manual a soft start and a soft finish. Um, that basically enables a slowdown uh, uh, position where the gates will actually uh, come to a very smooth stop. So if you have kind of a slam plate on one of the gates, uh, the the gates won't kind of meet each other with a clatter. Um, <clears throat> it just makes the uh, the installation look much nicer um, when in operation. So moving on, programming. So basic programming, if we were to not have the slowdown at all, um, what we need to use is the L1 button here. Okay, so all we have to do for basic mode only ever requires you to press this L1 button twice. So I'm going to press it once for one second, let go. My motor is now moving, my gates will now be opening. You must do this from the closed position as well, the fully closed position, because whichever position it started from is the position it's going to end at. Let's say my gates are open now, I'm going to press this for a second time. My gate will now use the same runtime for the closed direction as it did for the open. Now the reason that motor is not going yet is because I've got it in a single mode. <clears throat> so my second leaf will be in operation, will be closing first, but there's nothing connected in there yet. And once that comes to the closed position, it, you, after using the same runtime, um, then my second leaf will now start closing as well. So just let it carry out that operation and it comes to the fully closed position. Now I mentioned you must have these gates in the fully closed position. Um, <clears throat> There's two hacks. If you have not got this in the fully closed position and you uh, you need to kind of uh, get it there before you do this program, then there's two ways you can do this. The, you can either reverse the polarity of the motor uh, connections. So you'll know, you, you've got two live connections here, um, which you'll capacitor-wise across there. You can swap those over so that when you press the L1 button in basic mode, it runs the motor in the opposite direction and forces the gates to fully closed close, you power down and reverse the polarity back to its normal position and then power back up and, and start again. Or what you can do, we, I mentioned that you've got uh, over travel, that it uses the same travel for the open direction as it does for the close. So the other thing you can do with this is when you're programming the opening position, you'll have to guesstimate uh, how long to run it into the open stops for before pressing the L1 button again. If you do that and you uh, overcompensate for the uh, for the over travel on the in the open position, it will use that same runtime to run the gates back all the way to the closed position, and then you can start the process again with a more accurate uh, uh, position search. So those are the two ways really that you can uh, you can get the gates in the fully closed position to, do, to carry out your position search. <clears throat> the other way we can program these uh, these this panel these. Uh, uh, positions, like I say, with the soft start and soft finish, <clears throat> is by pressing and holding down the L1 button, but this time you keep it held down until motor one starts operating. Now, I'm not going to do this just yet. I'll explain the theory behind it first. So you press and hold that down. Now, you'll be programming one leaf at a time, uh, even in the open position. So once the first leaf starts going, you let go of L1, uh, the next time you press L1 is the air is you, the gate needs to be in a position where you want the slowdown to start. So I'd typically say 90% of the opening, and then it will carry on opening. And then you press the L1 button again to tell it where to finish its open position. You'll then program the uh, the same for leaf two. Um, again, you uh, just press the L1 button where to start the slowdown. Press it again where to finish its open travel. 
Leaf 2 will then start closing, uh, for which you will, again, wait till it's about 90% closed, press the L1 button to start the slowdown, and then press the L1 button again to finish that slowdown. And then finally, Motor 1 will start closing. And again, when it's 90% shut, press the L1 button once to tell it where to start the slowdown, and L1 again where to finish its slowdown. And one thing I kind of overlooked or I haven't mentioned just yet is that when you are programming these limits there, allow the gates to run into these stops for around one to two seconds. This will kind of take up any of the slack within the mechanism of the motors there. Uh, so you have no flex during the open position or closed position there. The, the motor mechanism will take up any flex in the, uh, in the gates uh, natural mechanism. Okay, so put this one to the test. So it's L1, but you press and hold it down and don't let go this time until the first motor starts moving. Now I can let go. <clears throat> so motor one is moving. Turn this move it onto there so you can see. And when it starts to get to the open position, I'm gonna press the L1 button once more. And you'll notice the difference in movement. It's still traveling, but much slower and then press the L1 button where to finish to open. Okay, so now motor two will be effectively going in the open position at full speed. <clears throat> when again, that gets about 90%, press the L1 button once, and then when it's doing its slowdown, press the L1 button where to finish. Okay, then motor two will start to close. Okay, so this will be again going at full speed, um, and we need to tell it where to start the slowdown and where to finish the slowdown. And now motor one will start again. So you'll notice there, I haven't got a motor connected onto motor two, but you still have to do that procedure. You still have to tell it where, tell motor two output. You have to, you have to program some setting to it. <clears throat> but in this case, I only have one. And I'm nearly at the end, so tell it where to start the slowdown. Motor starts slowing down really slowly. Allow it to run into its stop. And press the L1 button again. Now that's complete. You don't need to do anything else after that. The board will do its kind of uh, a bit of a reset or restart procedure. And we'll be left back with the diagnostic LEDs uh, we started with originally. <clears throat> so now we've got our photo cells programmed. We have our limits programmed. And one of the final stages really now is to program our remote control. Right, so this is the remote control supplied in the kit. Just take this out a little bit, which is the LiftMaster TX4 UNIS. Okay, uh, before we can program this remote into the system, we have to program the remote first before we can program into this panel. And the reason being is because this radio card, this decoder card, is suitable for the nine series of remote controls, so the 94335E, the 94330E, <clears throat> that particular model series of remote controls. This being the TX4 UNIS, it's compatible across the entire range of 433 LiftMaster series of operators, uh, but by default, this has been programmed or is set to uh, be compatible with the Evolution type of operators. And they haven't yet released a 240 volt panel yet, which has the Evolution radio card in. So. First step for program the remote control, press and hold the left and the right button until the white LED at the top will go steady. Now that's on solid, I need to choose a button on this remote that I want to program in. I'm going to use the top button and press that twice. One, two, and now press a different button on the fob to exit the learn mode. Uh, now this top button has been programmed as a 94335E, 94330E, etc. Uh, the rest of these buttons are still as the evolution code. Um, so to program this remote control in, in the center of the board, you have uh, a button labeled CH1. Press that once and release. Press the button we've programmed on our remote. The LED will do its kind of uh, diagnostic flash to tell, it's, tell us it's received a signal from the remote and then do this restart. And the remote's now programmed. Back to the original diagnostics. And if I press the top button on the remote control, Get it the first time, uh, the remote the motor will start to operate. 
And that's it for programming. Um, now, in terms of diagnostics, we've kind of been through some of the some of the main features on here really with photocells, where the middle row of LEDs you should only ever see the uh, LEDs flashing if you've got nothing connected into these inputs. The LED should be off for the uh, input you've got wired in for your photocell and would only come on solid if there's an obstruction. The green stop LED indicates that you've got a link across from the uh, the stop circuit and the edge uh, LED there will indicate that you've got your 8k to ohm uh, resistor either bridged across or you've got a safety edge wired into there. Um, this bottom row of LEDs, it's worth noting, if you have a pair of gates which are opening and not closing and all your diagnostic LEDs on your photocells are reading okay, the other ones to pay attention to are your start LEDs. So start one, which is uh, terminals for diagnostics for terminals 17 and 20, and start two, which is for uh, diagnostics for terminals 18 and 20. So that's for your main gate opening and that's for your pedestrian gate openings if, you, if you're using a if you wanted another push button on there to open one gate leaf partially. Um, so if you have a permanent LED on here at all, uh, then one of these contacts is permanently shorted out. So if you had a push button wired in there or an intercom, something like that wired in there, um, by default this, should, this LED should be off and will only come on when it gets a signal or a command from one of those devices. So if I press my push button to release the gates to open, for both gates to open, uh, my start one LED will come on briefly and my gates will start opening. Um, if my gates are stuck open and either of these two are on, then um, that's where you need to kind of do some investigation as to what con what uh, devices you have wired into these terminals and, uh, in and find out whether there's a short on the cabling or some water's gone into one of the devices or something along those lines. So those are the main diagnostics. Some of the main kind of uh, problems we come by on the CB11 is photocells or start command present, uh, those kind of things, or that the, uh, the the panel hasn't been programmed. It's a very important kind of procedure for this panel is to go through the programming. Uh, I hope this helped. Any questions at all, or if you're looking for any further diagrams, we have manuals.easygates.co.uk. You can email us via technical at easygates.co.uk. We also have a lot of inf lot of information on our website. That's www.easygates.co.uk. Thanks so much. To stay up to date with the latest in gate automation and safety, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter.